All right, today we've got a little lesson on the Van Hoff equation, which is how you can calculate the equilibrium constant at a new temperature if you're already given the equilibrium constant at one other temperature. You'll need the enthalpy change to do this calculation. If Kp, now this is Keq, when you use pressures instead of concentrations for the Haber process is 4.34 times 10 to the negative 3, at 300 degrees Celsius, estimate Kp at 600 degrees Celsius, that's 300 Celsius higher, and they also give you the delta H for this exothermic reaction as negative 92.4 kilojoules per mole. All you need to do is fill the information in and solve for the other equilibrium constant. I'm going to choose that the equilibrium constant they gave me is K1, and the initial temperature they gave me is T1. The pressure, the temperature that I want to calculate the new equilibrium constant at is going to be T2. And the new Kp is the K2 that I'm going to solve for, all right? Delta H is delta H. I hope that's obvious. So let's fill these numbers into the equation and see what we can do. We've got the natural logarithm, which I call the lawn of K2 over K1, which was 4.34 times 10 to the negative 3, equals negative delta H. So for the us, that's 92,400 joules per mole. It's positive because the negative cancels out that negative, And I'm converting it to joules per mole. That's multiplying it by 1,000 because I know that the R, the gas constant that I'm going to use, is 8.314 joules per mole Kelvin. The joules are going to cancel out, and the moles are going to cancel out. And my over Kelvin to the negative 1 flips the units of this whole thing into Kelvin. Anyways, let's do this part. 1 over T2. T2 for me is that 600 degrees Celsius. But in this equation, it needs to be in Kelvin. So I need to add 273. That makes 873.15, 873.15. I'll put the Kelvin in there for you kids. Minus, and the T1 is 300 degrees less than that. That's 573.15 Kelvin. Note that this unit is Kelvin to the negative 1, which cancels out with this Kelvin to give us a unitless unit. Like, no unit. You know what I mean. All right, now it's calculator time. 92,400 divided by 8.314. I'm going to do that separately. That gives me 11,113.8. That's technically Kelvin. And over here, I'm going to do 1 divided by 873.15 minus 1 divided by 573.15. That gives me a negative number. That's negative 5.995 times 10 to the negative 4. When I multiply those two numbers together, 11,113.8 I get negative 6.662. All right, so I'm left here with the natural log of K2 over 4.34 times 10 to the negative 2 equals that. The question I have for you, or for myself, is how do I undo ln on this side? Because I need to solve for K2. The answer to that is that I can get rid of ln on this side by taking the other side, oh, that was 10 to the negative 3. How did I mess that up? By taking e to the power of this other side here. e to the negative right side undoes ln on my left side. e to the power of negative 6.62. I have a special button for that. e to the power of answer is, oh, well, that can't be true. I must have made a mistake there. Uh, e to the power of negative 6.662, syntax error, e 
What? E. That's not E. E to the power of 1. E to the power of 1. Okay. E to the power of negative 6.662. Oh, if there wasn't a mistake. I typed it completely right the first time. I'm just a moron. That's negative 3. And in order to solve for K2 on this side, I need to multiply it by the original KP that we were given. That's times 4.34 times 10 to the negative 3, which gives me a new equilibrium constant of 5.55 times 10 to the negative 6. Okay, that is a lower equilibrium constant than it was at 300 degrees Celsius. Let's check to make sure that makes sense with Le Chatelier's principle. If this is an exothermic reaction, I have plus heat as a product, and increasing the temperature is like adding heat, which should shift the equilibrium that way. Amount of products goes down, amount of reactants goes up, and so K should go down as well. Ha, huh, story checks out. I believe this number. Now again, this is an estimate. Um, I'm pretty sure that the KP for this reaction at 600 is proven to be some other amount, but for the most part, the Van Hoff equation is a great way to estimate the KEQ at a new temperature. Thanks for paying attention. Thanks for sticking with me, and uh, best of luck to you.